In this video, we'll discuss the uses of a few metals and a few non-metals. Let's begin with metals. Metals are often used in their pure form as well as in the form of compounds with other metals or other non-metals. We'll begin with discussing the use of a few pure metals. Copper is often used in its pure form for wires. Copper is often used for winding in transformers, motors, generators. Titanium is another example of a metal which is used in pure form. Titanium is used in aircraft engine parts. Titanium is used even in dental implants. Another example of a metal being used in pure form is silver. Silver is used to make ornaments. Gold is used to make ornaments too. Right? You see rings, bangles, necklaces of silver and gold. Let's go to the next one. We also see aluminium often used in its pure form. Vessels high tension wires or aluminium foil. Aluminium is a versatile, lightweight, yet strong metal. Let's go to the next one. Mercury. This is one of the metals that exists in liquid form at room temperature. And that property is pretty useful in measuring temperature or pressure. Let's go to the next example. Chromium is an example of a metal which is shiny and doesn't get corroded easily. So it's often used for plating over other metals. Here's an example of a bike engine which has been plated with chromium or this symbol on a car which has been plated with chromium. Chromium is often used to plate even a lot of industrial equipment so that it does not get rusted. Next, let's discuss the uses of some non-metals. Non-metals are of different types and we'll go discussing a few of them. Let's begin with carbon. Carbon is found in different forms and one of the forms it's found in is graphite. Graphite is useful in pencils, graphite is useful in batteries. Diamond is another form in which carbon is found. Diamond is used for ornaments. Coal is also another form of carbon. While it seems very unattractive and unappealing, coal is very useful for power generation and a lot of our daily electricity needs are provided by coal. Let's go to another example. Nitrogen is often used in fertilizers. This NPK fertilizer, which is a pretty popular fertilizer, has nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So that's two nonmetals and one metal. NPK is useful for a variety of plants, and so it's pretty popular. Nitrogen is also commonly used in our snacks. No, we don't eat nitrogen, but nitrogen is used to keep the snacks fresh. 85% of that fluffed up packet is nitrogen. Okay, great. Let's move on to our next example, which is oxygen. Oxygen is a gas which is very important for our daily lives because we just cannot live without it. If we didn't have oxygen, we wouldn't be able to breathe, right? If we didn't have oxygen, we wouldn't be able to light a fire and cook food. If we didn't have oxygen, we wouldn't be able to weld metals together. You see, it has a lot of applications. All these different different uh, metals and non-metals have a variety of applications, and I'm just mentioning one or two of them. Let's move ahead. What about hydrogen? Where do you think hydrogen is used? Well, let's go to one interesting example here. Uh, there's a lot of scope for hydrogen to be used as a fuel, so there's a high chance that it may be used in future cars and buses to propel motors. It's already being used in quite a few cars and buses, but it's not as popular as petrol diesel or electric vehicles yet. Anyway, you can maybe come back 10 years later and check if it's true. Great. Another place where hydrogen is useful is in producing Vanaspati. Vanaspati, what is often called by the brand name Dalda, is a hydrogenated vegetable oil. It's vegetable oil taken and uh, a few hydrogen bonds are created with the oil and that makes Dalda. Okay, that's just a picture for reference. Let's move ahead. Okay, what about sulfur? Where is sulfur used? Sulfur is pretty dangerous, mind you, but it's pretty common around us. A lot of batteries use sulfuric acid, which is made using sulfur. If you remember, sulfur is also used in vulcanization of rubber. That's a process where rubber, which is pretty brittle, is treated with sulfur to make it strong and pliable. Okay, let's move on to our next example, and that is chlorine. Chlorine is something we use every day. Chlorine is found in our common salt, NaCl, sodium chloride right? And we eat it every day. Chlorine gas is also used as a disinfectant to purify water in swimming pools and large water treatment plants. Let's move on to our next example and this is iodine. Where have you heard of iodine? I'm pretty sure you've heard of it in your salt, right? 
All of us have a gland called the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland requires iodine for proper functioning. And that's why iodine is often added to the salt and made iodized salt so that it can help in the proper functioning of our thyroid gland. Let's go to another example of the use of iodine, and that is as an antiseptic. Iodine is used for, uh, iodine-based medicines rather, they use for gargling or treating wounds. Let's go to the next example of a non-metal, and that is fluorine. Fluoride toothpastes are very, very popular and useful in arresting and controlling dental cavities. Calcium fluoride is often the thing that is used in toothpaste. Next, let's discuss bromine's uses. Bromine's top use is as a fire extinguisher. Bromine-based fire retardants are useful in controlling fires. That's it for this video. Thank you.